hello, hello, hello. Who's with me? I saw a few people dinging in as I was setting up on the backside. I think I saw Mrs. Rhonda Rue and fun news. I think I figured out the technology. One, let me know if you can hear me because I did get a little fancy. I'm trying the microphone today. And then two, it looks like I can see comments and hopefully reply back this time. So we have this beautiful communication because you know my number one goal is community. So let's see. I saw something move there. Um, but I didn't see anything on this side. So just give me one moment. All right, live chat. Maybe I need to click that. Yay, Steve says, yes, we can hear you. Thank you, hot husband. So glad you're here. All right, so now that I know the technology's working, we can get the dancing working. Because you know, what is a meal in my kitchen without a little shoulder shake? And speaking of hot husband, I will tell you, he and peanut butter pie were definitely making fun of my shoulder shake the other night. And... <laughs> I could not deny it. It's hard not to dance when I get so excited about this gorgeous nutrition. So as I'm playing with this kale, that kind of looks like a kale afro, I will tell you, we are making collie ginger salmon plus a magical kale salad. That is what is for dinner tonight. So hopefully you already grabbed the ingredients and you're planning to cook with me. But if not, head on over to michellefox.com forward slash events, and then you'll see the link to get the ingredients so that you can either follow along or grab the ingredients over the weekend and make this for your dinner on Saturday or Sunday. This is literally my favorite meal. I was with a girlfriend earlier today and she asked what my favorite meal is or was. And I'm like, how funny. Just join my Facebook Live tonight and you'll see exactly what the favorite meal is. And the whole reason why I'm making this meal on Facebook Live tonight is to celebrate my birthday. It's November, which means it's my birthday month. There's a little birthday dance. You like that? There's a birthday dance. <laughs> and I am totally that kid that celebrates her birthday all month long. So we are making my favorite meal tonight. As per usual, I will do my best to share why I like to use these ingredients what nutrients they're bringing to our body, how they're bringing us more energy, more balance for our hormones. So let's dig in. Before though, I did say let's dig in, but before that, just to entice you to stay to the end, I've got a special gift for you. So try to remember or remind me if I forget to tell you, because I created a special little gift for you last night. And you know, a little hip tip, I think I put the little link in the uh, comments I'm learning all of this technology as it gets better. And as Facebook grows and as Instagram grows, your girl is trying to keep up. So for my techies, you might have received a gift somewhere in the comments or somewhere on the screen. Um, but if not, remind me before I sign off. And I want to make sure you get this gift because I made it for you pretty late last night. <laughs> all right, now we can dig in. So again, if you're just joining Facebook, no, excuse me, michellefox.com forward slash events to get the link to get you to the ingredients for this recipe. We are going to set our ovens, uh, preheat at 375 degrees. So let's start there. I'll give you a moment. I saw some movement over here. So while you're turning your oven on to 375, let's see if I saw anything. Nope, looks like we're good. Okay. Um, and then... Grab your cauliflower. You can see mine over my shoulder. I steamed mine earlier just because I knew I'd get to talking and time would fly. And <laughs> you just never know what's going to happen on, on these lives. Um, so I steamed my cauliflower. So I'll move to the side so you can see. I've just got like the old fashioned steamer. Uh, you might have a boiler that you steam your veggies in. Um, but grab a whole head of cauliflower, chop it coarsely, and coarsely again means, you know, chopped, it doesn't have to be perfect. There is no such thing as perfection in culinary nutrition, except for getting that perfect nutrition in your body. Uh, so chop the cauliflower coarsely, 
steam it. Well, of course, wa wash it first, rinse it first. Steam it until it's just about fork tender. And then you can leave it on the stove for now. We're gonna use that as our last step. But just so you know, I already steamed my cauliflower. It's sitting here waiting to be pulsed in the blender. Another hip tip ahead of time, I'll tell you, we're gonna pulse it because I made this recipe, well, I made the mashed cauliflower recipe last week and I put it on full speed and it came out like baby food and uh, the family definitely gave me two thumbs down for that one. <laughs> we still ate it, but it wasn't great. All right, let's see. So, Rhonda Rue says, love you, birthday month, sis. Yes, I know, you're one of my heart loves as well. I think you celebrate your birthday the whole month of February, right? Well, just know I'm over here celebrating you the whole month of February. All right, so, ovens are set, 375 degrees, cauliflower, Steam it the way you steam veggies. And if you're one of my newbies, go ahead and just Google how to steam veggies. Cause <laughs> like I said, I already steamed mine. So we're gonna move right along. Um, let's jump straight into the salmon. So I've got, it ended up being five fillets. I typically cook four at a time, depending. We've got uh, some selective eaters, I will say in my house. Uh, but tonight, this is what was uh, available. So we're doing all five pieces. When you do your salmon, you want to make sure, I'm grabbing some paper because I just see some liquid still in here. We want to dab it because we don't want, at least for this recipe, you can make uh, your salmon any way you want to. But for this recipe, I want baked salmon. I don't want poached. So I'm just dabbing the liquid because that's going to get the salmon nice and crispy. And just so you know, you can use the salmon with the skin on the bottom. And I'm very uh, specific with that. If you have skin on, you want it on the bottom of your pan. I've got a 9 by 13 glass dish. Um, and if you have skin off, which is what I have here, it's all good. We're going to get in there. Tonight, maybe that's part of why I love this meal. I mean, one loaded with nutrition. We've got the omega-3 with the salmon. We've got the vitamin C and the chlorophyll and all the things we know that green things do and the kale. We've got tons of vitamin C in the cauliflower. So those are just some reasons why I love this meal. But I think I love making this meal so much because I get to use my hands. And I am definitely the girl that likes to be in the garden, getting her hands in there, in the kitchen, getting her hands in there, in my daughter's hair, even though she doesn't love that, getting in there. <laughs> I just love that tactile thing. So with your salmon, rinse it, of course. Rinse it under cool water because we don't want to start the cooking process. Put it in your 9 by 13 dish. Actually, can we just give this beautiful salmon a moment? Oh, thank you, salmon, for giving your life for our bellies because it's going down tonight. So the salmon, and then lastly, pat it dry because we want dry fillets we don't because uh, if we have too much water it's just going to be more liquidy and uh, i prefer the crispy so i'm going for crispy tonight so we've got the fillets i'm just going to drizzle some olive oil can anybody tell me why we like to use olive oil and i'll throw it in there why we like to use coconut oil why we like to use ghee why we like to use full fat butter, why we like to use Miyoko's uh, vegan butter. Let me see if I'm missing any in that. Or when we are cooking and eating. Let me see. I'll keep giving, to, giving it to you. It supports, what do the, all of these healthy fats support? I'll name them again. We've got the olive oil. We've got the ghee, we've got the full fat butter, we've got the coconut oil. Oh, and the avocado oil, of course. What do all of those oils do for our bodies? I'm gonna look close to make sure I'm not missing any comments here versus here. Let's see. And I'm happy to just do a dance because as much as I've talked about these oils, I know my community knows 
We want to use the coconut oil. We want to use the olive oil. We want to use the full fat butter. We want to use the avocado oil because they all have one huge benefit for our body, which is All right, I don't think I can move forward until I hear from my community. Okay, it's my birthday month. I guess everything goes. I'm a Sagittarius. <laughs> In perfect form, it all goes. So it's to support our brains. We want these healthy fats to support our brains. So we get them in there. Oh, and Steve Black. Thank you, Steve Black. Maybe it's just on a time delay because I already knew you knew that one. So brain health, yes. You get an A plus, honey bunny. Um, so yes, all of these healthy fats support our brain. So that is why we are using the olive oil in this one um, because I just happen to love the flavor. I'm gonna sprinkle on I'll, I'll, I said sprinkle, let's go back to the drizzle. I love the drizzle. I'm gonna drizzle on a little bit of tamari. And tamari is, uh, we could say AKA soy sauce, but it's gluten free. Can you believe that most soy sauce has gluten in it? Like why do you need to add wheat? Soy sauce is perfectly delicious without the wheat, which thank goodness a lot of the brands have caught on now. So. If you're at a sushi spot, an Asian restaurant, um, at the grocery store, a super simple switch or tweak or another hip tip, because I just love saying hip tip, <laughs> grab the tamari because you're gonna get that delicious soy sauce. It tastes, I promise you, exactly the same as the other stuff, but it has less of that inflammatory ingredient. So. Uh, tamari or this is called liquid aminos so we've got the aminos to add a little bit more protein and this is going to add a nice uh, kind of salty flavor to the salmon so that's why I chose tamari for that I'm also going to add oh and I'm going to avoid the sea salt on that because the tamari is plenty salty um, I'm going to add a little bit of garlic powder you can see I'm sprinkling it up high so it travels along and I really like garlic so I'm going to add even more garlic because I know you are similar to me with a super busy lifestyle. This is one of my cheats and I do use the word cheat instead of hack because I don't love that this is in plastic but I love that this garlic is already minced for me. I do have a regular garlic which you know when I have more time whether it's uh happen to have more time during the weekday, but typically on the weekends, I will definitely choose the natural whole, gar whole garlic over the already minced version. But since we've got this, I'm just adding some minced garlic on top of these gorgeous salmon fillets. And if you're wondering, I, uh, Steve gets this big old jar from Costco. But I noticed they have this sale at King Supers too. So you can find already minced garlic, I think just regular uh, in the produce section of your regular store or find it at Costco and you get that big honker <laughs> or honka donka as we would say as a kid um, at your, at your, uh, not at your leisure, at your convenience. It makes cooking go by so much faster. And my goal is to get this nutrition in your body. So as simple as I can make it for you, I promise I'm doing it. I'm working my hardest to make it simple to get it in your body. All right, so we've got the garlic, we've got the tamari, we've got the salmon, we've got the olive oil. We are missing, ooh, my piece de resistance. Mwah. The ginger, we need the ginger. That would make it the Kali ginger part of the recipe. So I'll put the salmon to the side. I got some real life ginger. This is one thing I actually do make time for. The garlic, already done. And I know you can find ginger already uh, prepared in the store as well, but there's just, ooh, there is nothing like just that fresh garlic. Can you smell it through the screen? Ah, love that. So I am just cutting off some of the hard pieces. Well, the hard skin. Because the skin, if you cook with it, you'll find it makes it taste uh, a little sour. So nobody has time for sour ginger. 
So I'm just kind of cutting mine in a square. And so you see I got, oh, no, I still have some skin on there. So now we have that clean ginger. And now I'm just going to mince it in the smallest pieces that I have patience for. For those of you who are more on the professional chef side and have professional cutting skills, just look away for the next two minutes because I do not have the professional skills. But what I do have is a quest for deliciousness and high nutrition. So I'm just going to keep chopping this ginger the way I know how to chop ginger, which is to just keep chopping <laughs> until it can get as tiny as I have the patience for. While I'm cutting, I'm going to look away. Let's see. Rhonda Rue says, I'm not interacting much because I'm trying to catch up as I'm cooking. Ah, yay. So you're cooking with me. I love it. And don't forget to take photos. I always love to see your gorgeous photos. Um, for anybody who's not following Rhonda Rue, check her out on Instagram. You're welcome to put your Instagram handle in there, Rhonda, if you want to, because you always just put really fun, beautiful photos up. And I love when you put your food up there. All right, so I will also take that as a hint to maybe slow down. Um, so while we're chopping the ginger, if you are cooking with me, which sounds like Rhonda Rue is, yay, hopefully your cauliflower is steaming and we're just gonna steam it to fork tender, uh, uh, not temperature, but tendency. Um, and then the oven is preheating at 375 because that's where we're going to bake our salmon. And I think that's it. Otherwise, just keep chopping. Here we go. I'm going to keep chopping this ginger because one, oh, it smells so delicious. And two, I know that the more patience I have, the more delicious the salmon will be because if I can get smaller pieces, then I can spread it around a little bit more and that flavor is going to travel on these gorgeous salmon fillets. All right, awesome. So Rhonda put, she's at Rhonda MR Knight at Instagram. Go follow our girl. And if you're not following me yet, I'm at Instagram at Michelle Fox Love, and I would love to get some of your love over there as well. I've been having a lot of fun with reels lately. Angel Face, the 14 year old TikTok amazing phenom has been teaching me a lot of her tricks so it's been fun to have that project with her okay so now that i have minced this which actually i'm really proud of myself thank you all for talking with me because it gave me a little bit more time to mince it a little bit finer than i typically do i'm just going to sprinkle that all around my salmon this salmon that is loaded with omega-3 oils another healthy fat that is amazingly brain supportive and so as you can see everything's sprinkled so now it's time to dig in with our hands so we're just gonna go and i'm just gonna literally just spread just kind of massage that salmon spread all these pieces and then i'm gonna flip the filet and then spread the bottom make sure i get lots of these delicious garlic and ginger pieces and the tamari and the olive oil just naturally spreads all around them. So I'm just trying to evenly spread out the garlic and the ginger. There we go. And then I'm going to flip it back over and just ensure that all of these yummy ingredients are spread relatively even. Again, there's no perfect formula. There's no perfection in baking. We just know that we're getting the antioxidants, the anti-inflammatory ingredients, and the whole lot of brain support of love in this dish right here. So I'll just show you, this is what it looks like here. I'm going to rinse my hands right here because nobody wants salmon fingers. <laughs> That's the way that sounds. That actually sounds really gross. I won't say that again. <laughs> uh, so I just rinsed 
the ingredients off of my fingers. And now I'm putting it in my oven, again, 375 degrees. And it's going to be put in for about 12 minutes. I can typically smell it when it's about ready, but just to be safe uh, for you for the first time if you're making this with me, uh, I would say 12 to 14 minutes if you like your salmon all the way done. If you like it more on the kind of softer side, uh, I would say closer to 10 to 11 minutes. Um, if you want it medium texture, 12 to 13 minutes. And if you want it all the way cooked through, I'd say 14 to 15 minutes is fine. It'll be delicious. So here we go in the oven. Okay, so 12 minutes on that. And for those of you who are not cooking, if you actually wouldn't mind doing me a favor and setting a timer and just letting me know, <laughs> just in case I get talking and I can't quite use the senses that I normally do. All right, let's jump into my very favorite kale salad. I will tell you this one is compliments of Megan Teltner, my teacher. Uh, she's the founder of Academy of Culinary Nutrition. And this is inspired by one of her kale salads. I believe it's in her book, um, The Undiet Cookbook. So if you don't have that cookbook yet, if you're in my circle, you probably do, because I tend to give it away as gifts. <laughs> but if you don't, go ahead and buy it wherever you buy books. So I have my kale. Mm, can I just, mm, just hug in my kale? I could, I could hug the kale all day. But you didn't come for that. So let's grab the kale. <laughs> I've got two beautiful heads of kale today. And this salad doesn't typically last long in our house. I will tell you, between Steve and I, uh, we definitely serve up huge portions. And the kiddos actually like this one, too. I don't think they ever take it out for leftovers for their lunch the next day. But I definitely eat it for leftovers for my lunch the next day. So this kale has already been pre-washed, pre-rinsed, and I am going to take it out and I'm just going to slice it in, well, I'll show you. So it's not small slices, but it's not big slices either. And once again, from my professional uh, knife skills people, look away just for two minutes. It's all good. <laughs> We're going to slice up this kale. And I'll show you. So about like this size. So kind of like baby kale size is what I am getting. I'm kind of bunching it up here. And then I'm just making horizontal lines down the bunch. Can anybody tell me just one benefit of kale and you know we're on our technology so feel free to google it that's what google's for right to help us out and then if you're cooking don't worry i don't i don't expect you to talk back to me because your hands are deep in this kale i'm going to kind of shake out some of that water in my extra bowl here and then i'm going to put this kale in my beautiful bo blue bowl and then I'm going to grab my next head of kale. And let's see. So Andrea says, how much amino liquid did you add? Great question. It was, I would estimate maybe two to three tablespoons. And that was for five fillets. Oh, and by the way, hi. Thank you so much for being here. And does that mean you're cooking with us tonight? Uh, let's see. And then Andrea says, can you remind us why you store the kale in water? Absolutely. Another awesome question. So this helps the kale stay fresher for longer. Um, don't you hate like either when you get home from the farmer's market or your eyes get really big in the grocery store and you're like, yeah, I'm going to eat kale this week and I'm going to have some carrots and I'm going to have that broccoli. And then by day six or seven, everything's in your little crisper and it's like, oh, it's wilted. <laughs> well, this is your solution. This actually, if I store it in the water and in the fridge and in a glass jar, it honestly can stay up to two weeks. We've had it um, 
yeah, I've actually repurposed, well, I shouldn't say repurposed, but I actually used the kale two weeks later. Um, I will warn you, there will be a little fermentation smell, which the family doesn't love, but, <laughs> but it tastes fine and it's, it's still really great. You're still getting those uh, nutrients. So glass jars, because we don't want the chemicals leaching in from the plastic, but also they just are amazing at storing the veggies. And so kale is one of the veggies that loves water. If you see it in nature, or if you're a gardener, you're gonna actually be watering kale a lot more than maybe some of your other veggies. Kale is similar to herbs. Pretty much any herbs are gonna be water hogs out in nature, like they need a lot of water to build that chlorophyll and be nurtured. So that is why I store the kale in water. Thank you so much for asking. Awesome question. All right, and good answer, you're on it. The antioxidants, yes. Kale is loaded with antioxidants. And actually my cutting board's getting a little full here. So let's put that to the side now. Loaded with antioxidants. And as the season gets cooler, we want to be very mindful of upping our vitamin C. And look at this, I'll get even closer. This kale, is chock full of vitamin C, which we know will ward away the colds. So my community is staying healthy this season, right? Because we are loading up on our vitamin C. Um, I'm no doctor, so take this for what it's worth. But if you have a vitamin D supplement, you would have my, my nodding of approval. Is that a good way to say it without getting in trouble? <laughs> So the vitamin C, the vitamin D, because you can't get vitamin D from any foods. So there's no foods that I can tell you to go to. But as you know, walks during the lunch break where you're getting some sunshine, that definitely helps to increase your vitamin D as well. All right, so keep chopping that kale. And like I said, I have two heads of kale because uh, it's just how I roll. But if you only have one head of kale, you're still gonna have plenty for this beautiful salad. Oh, and then did you notice that? I promise I won't keep talking. Well, actually I will, <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> but when I'm talking, I pause because I have a very sharp knife in my hand and I try to tell that to my children. You wanna focus as much as possible. And I should say talking to the camera. Cause I can still talk and chop while I'm watching my fingers. But if I'm looking up at you, or if I'm looking away from where I'm chopping, no chopping. All right, so let's take these cute little afros and kind of squeeze out some of that water and put it in this bowl. And then we'll grab the next. I'm gonna squeeze out the water. put it in the bowl. And now I'm just gonna kinda clean off this water off of my cutting board, cause that can get real messy real fast. <laughs> All right, here we go. So the next thing we're going to do is show. So this is the before. Feel free to take a screenshot if you want, because the after is going to look very different in about five minutes. So before. <laughs> and now we're going to just sprinkle on. If you have one head of kale, um, I would do maybe one teaspoon salt. If you have two heads of kale, two teaspoons salt. And it's going to be sea salt or Himalayan pink salt. For the olive oil, we're going to do I would say that was about three tablespoons for two heads of kale. I'd probably just do one and a half tablespoons for the one head of, head of kale. We are going to squeeze in half of a lemon and the very fun part, we are going to massage this kale. Massaging the kale is what breaks down the cell walls and makes it so much easier to digest 
and in my opinion, makes it so much yummier to eat. So now that we have the sea salt to help kind of rub down the walls, as you can say, or break down some of the cell walls in the kale, we've got the citric um, acid from the lemon that's also gonna help us break it down. And we've got the olive oil that kind of helps put everything together. So get in there. Another shout out to my sister, Andrea Johnson. She does mobile massages. So if you're in the Denver area, I believe she might be open for business for more clients. I will tell you, her client list has exploded in the last few months, so can't promise her availability, but Andrea, you are definitely welcome to put your contact information in there if you would like to open up to my community. I can tell you I am not, uh, objective we already know because she's my sister but i promise you she is the best massage therapist that i have ever gone to very spiritual very much aware of all of our body parts and i just i just love getting a massage from my sister so all of that to say that is the way we are massaging this kale and we are massaging it for a good a minimum three minutes massaging it for about five minutes is ideal because again, the more we break down those cell walls, the better it's going to digest in our bodies. All right, as I'm massaging, let's see what we've got. So Steve Black says it's loaded with vitamins and minerals. Yes, I think that was the question for the kale. It is absolutely loaded with vitamin. I believe it's vitamin K, correct me if I'm wrong, um, which is awesome for our bone health. Uh, sometimes at our dinner table, uh, I won't call anybody out. I'll just say people that I'm not married to. <laughs> people that I'm not married to sometimes argue with me about getting in calcium from uh, dairy milk, which I don't allow in the house um, because I believe it's very anti, or it's very inflammatory, not anti inflammatory Dairy milk is very inflammatory. Bam, I said it. So kale actually is one amazing way to get calcium in our body, and it does support our bone health. So that's another reason why we're eating this kale. Let's see. Andrea says, okay, thank you. So good to know. Ah, uh, thank you. Yay, you are welcome. Absolutely. Thank you for being the best massage therapist that I've been to. So we are just getting in there. If you, uh, I was gonna say get out some of your uh, anxiety from the day, but we'll push the anxiety out that way. We're gonna put love in this way. So honestly, if you wanna say a little prayer while you're massaging, I find this very meditative. If you wanna say what you're grateful for, put that in the kale. And actually, why don't we do that now? For those of you who are not cooking, because if you are cooking with me, your hands look like this, so I don't want you touching your keyboards, getting them all uh, kaled up. <laughs> kale, yeah, that'd be a kale, no. Uh, so those of you who are not cooking, tell me one thing that you are deeply grateful for today. It doesn't have to be of all time. It doesn't have to be forever, but what is one thing that you are deeply grateful for today? I saw some hearts go up. Yay. I, I feel some great gratitude in our community. And keep going. Sometimes I have to take a break. You see the left hand, I need a break. So the, the right hand's getting in there. <laughs> Whew. And it's actually smelling so good. Can you smell that? I get like um, whiffs of that lemon citrus aroma, which I have to say is my very favorite aromatherapy fresh lemons, which is a close tie to the rain, fresh rain outside, which we had the other day here in Colorado, which was a really fun surprise. The grass is still very green, which is kind of rare around this time for Colorado. So it's, uh, it's been an interesting year, right? To, <laughs> to say the least, I would say that would be an understatement for most of our years. All right, let's see. Now I think I see some things moving on my screen, but again, I'm not touching this because of the hands. Let's see if I can see anything from this way. 
All right, what I can see is a little link. So hopefully you can see that little link. I promised when I started that I would tell you about your free gift. So you've made it this far. I made a gift for you. It is a guide of three of my favorite sugar substitutes. If you go to michellefox.com forward slash sugar, you will have your gift right there. But it also looks like this technology is working really nice on Facebook because you can hopefully in the bottom left of your screen, you'll see something that says your gift. If you click on that, that should take you straight to the link. Let me see if I see it on this side. Actually, I don't. So I don't, I can't guarantee you see it on your side, but if someone who doesn't have dirty hands wants to write that in the comments for others, I would love to share my gift with you. It's michellefox.com forward slash sugar. And that's just S-U-G-A-R to share my three favorite sugar substitutes, what they are and how to use them. All right, so I'm gonna assume that I've talked for at least three minutes because this kale is looking gorgeous. I'm just gonna wipe some of that off because I don't wanna waste any of this delicious, nutritious green stuff. And now we did the before photo and now you can see, look at that. Here's the after. It's almost like halfway down because we quote unquote cooked the kale as we massaged it. And again, we did that to make it easier to digest. So we're gonna put that to the side and I do smell the salmon. So I'm just gonna go double check to see how it is, but I'm actually gonna rinse my hands first. Mmm, I just got another whiff of that delicious lemon. All right, and as always, safety first. We want the oven mitts, no matter how professional we are at pulling things in and out of the oven. Okay, I think I want maybe another two minutes on mine. And I, again, I like my salmon more on the crispy side, so I'm gonna go more for like the 12 to 14 minute range. If you want yours less, feel free to pull it out now. If you want it even more crispy, leave it in. I want this to be delicious for you because the more delicious, it's, the more delicious it is, the more chance we'll have of getting it in your body. All right, so now that we've got this gorgeous kale, I'll put it to the side here. We can add capers for the saltiness, if you like capers. I put in, oh, these are actually pretty liquidy. Let me grab the spatula. I'm putting in about three tablespoons, it looks like, of capers. I'm going to put in a whole avocado because this adds just a delicious creaminess. And as we know, the avocado is going to give us that potassium and the anti-inflammatory ingredients. Oh, I love when that happens. <laughs> You never know what you're going to get with the avocado, and it's working with us tonight, so yay. So I'm just going to take it. I'm going to make some thin cuts, horizontal. I guess that would be horizontal. And now some thin cuts, vertical. And then the side of the avocado with the seed in it. We're just going to make one. Oh, normally I send X, but that was just one and done. I had a feeling tonight would be lucky. That was a good one. Let's see if I, if I can get it off now. Okay. Okay, there we go. <laughs> we'll just pretend that was nice and smooth. Okay, and same here. We're just going to make horizontal or vertical cuts, depending on how you're holding your avocado. Another gorgeous, healthy fat. And then bam, it's kind of like a checkerboard. And then this really fun trick I learned from bonus daughter, Lucy. Uh, you don't need to waste any silverware because you can just, after you cut your pieces, you just squeeze it. And look at that, those gorgeous pieces of avocado just come right out. 
lovely. And then I'm just gonna double check my recipe to make sure I don't forget anything. Um, in my recipe, again, michellefox.com forward slash events. If you wanna grab the link and print this for later, it's definitely printable. You can make it this weekend. It has all the ingredients that you can shop for and all the steps on how to do this. And then of course, rewatch this and then it'll, it'll feel like we're cooking together. So hi to all my replay folks. Um, but on that recipe, I put walnuts. I had pecans left over. I didn't find any walnuts in the fridge today. So use what you have. I totally encourage all my students to play and experience, experiment with what tastes good and what feels good in our body. So got pecans for this one. It's another kind of soft nut. I know there are some people in our community that are allergic to nuts. So use seeds. I think pumpkins, ooh, actually pumpkin seeds would be really delicious in this salad. So pumpkin seeds would be great sunflower seeds, or just leave it out altogether because the deliciousness with the kale and the avocado, I mean, you're pretty much set right there. But then there's more. <laughs> We've got sun-dried tomatoes. I'm gonna grab probably, I would say like a quarter cup. And this is for the two heads of kale. And if you like sun-dried tomatoes, Go for it, like add even more if you want. And then, I've only found them in oil. I don't know if sun-dried tomatoes come plain packed or dry packed, but I always prefer them in oil, but that's always the only way I find them as well. And then now, I'm just gonna make a few rough chops in there so that it's easy to pick up with a fork when we're eating this salad. And now I do smell the salmon in the temperature that I like to smell it and that I like to eat it. So I'm gonna go grab that out of the oven. So double check yours if you haven't pulled yours out already. So I'm gonna go grab that before I get my hands dirty with the sun-dried tomatoes. And we'll turn the oven off so we can Maybe cool things down in the kitchen. Oh yeah. And now we've got our crispy salmon. So you can see it doesn't, I don't think it looks all that sexy right now, but just you wait. It's gonna look good once we plate it. I'm gonna put it here on my hot plate so it doesn't ruin the counters. Actually, I'll put this next to the salmon. I'm also going to take a sip of water. Public service announcement. People often think you need more water in the summer because of the hot heat and the hot sun. But the winter is actually when we need the most water because the, um, well, yeah, I can say that. <laughs> My brain kind of crashed because I don't, I'm like, I don't, we're talking about food. You don't want to talk about sweat. But you typically are sweating more than you realize with the coats and the hats and then the uh, heaters in most of our offices and most of our homes. It's actually sucking out nutrients and sucking moisture out of our skin. So we want to drink as much water as possible during the winter and also to just continue to flush out the toxins. So there's your public service announcement. All right, back to this gorgeous kale salad. So I'm looking at my ingredients. And for those of you who just joined, you can go to michellefox.com forward slash events for the recipe or the link to the recipe. So I'm just reading it verbatim. We've got the kale, the lemon juice, the olive oil, sea salt, avocado. It says walnuts. We've got pecans. You might want to use pine nuts or ooh, pistachios would be delicious on this one or like I said, the pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds. We got that in there. The sun-dried tomatoes, they're about to be in there. I said two heaping spoonfuls of capers. I think there's three heaping spoonfuls of capers in this one. And then your preferred salad dressing. All right, so I'm getting dirty again, just the way I like it. So sun-dried tomatoes, 
going in and we're going to I thought I could get away with doing something creative with this oil but no if I don't rinse it off now it's going to be very messy <laughs> so you know feel free to take this break to grab your free gift hopefully it's at the bottom corner bottom left corner if you're on your phone but if not you can also find your free gift at michellefox.com forward slash sugar all right and now that we have all these gorgeous ingredients here we're just going to grab some salad tongs and mixy mixy and because we already massaged our kale and it's full of the oil and the sea salt or the himalayan pink salt it's lovely because these ingredients that we just added they stick to the sides of the kale so you know when you often do just plain dry salads or as my sister would say <laughs> you know how the ingredients often fall to the very bottom and you have to go digging for the good stuff with this gorgeous kale salad the ingredients stick so look at that they're in there so now the last thing when we first started i asked you to steam your cauliflower so if you have go ahead and grab your food processor and or blender and we're going to pulse this one because i shared earlier that last week I made this mashed cauliflower and I just did the blend and it came out like baby food and it was pretty gross. We still ate it but tonight it's our special night. It's gonna be good this time. <laughs> All right and I actually saw some movement so let me double check before I go on to here. Let's see so oh Melissa's here. Hello gorgeous so great to have you. And she says, click on the link icon next to the comment box. Thank you for that hip tip. I appreciate that greatly. And then Andrea Johnson says, nicely done, LOL. <laughs> yeah, I know. My family loves to laugh at me and it's all good. So if you have your steamed cauliflower, put it in your food processor or your blender. And if you don't have either, no worries. I would find probably like a a uh, mixing bowl like this and then you can literally just hand mash it because this is going to be kind of like our substitute mashed potatoes. I love mashed, I love a good mashed potato. However, they are typically higher on the glycemic index which, are n which is not great for our blood sugar. So that's why I really like to use the cauliflower because we're getting super low carb and super delicious and super high in vitamin C. So that's why I chose the cauliflower for this one. So we've got the cauliflower. I'm putting in maybe a teaspoon of sea salt. I'm putting in, oh, actually earlier, I put in maybe a tablespoon of the Miyoko's vegan butter, but you can go ahead and put a tablespoon of full fat butter, which makes it really delicious, or um, actually olive oil would still be good in this one. You can use the avocado oil, but it doesn't have a lot of flavor to it. So I would use your oils that have the flavor to kind of oomph up this mashed collie. What else? Oh, garlic. You can either do the live garlic, which I do sometimes, but for this evening, this evening's dinner, I'm doing the garlic powder, doing maybe like a quarter of a teaspoon. And let me read my recipe to make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Oh, so I didn't put pepper in the recipe, but I like pepper in my mashed cauliflower. So we've got the live pepper and there we go. So now we're gonna do some pulses. Again, I strongly <laughs> recommend you do not do full blend. We're just gonna do the pulse. And while we're pulsing, feel free to do the little pulse shoulder dance. Here we go. Pulse, pulse, pulse. <laughs> and you can see some of it's kind of coming up to the side. Feel free to, ooh. Ooh, wow, my hips started moving. I felt like I didn't even have control over that. The hips just started going. All right, I guess the hips are looking forward to this mashed collie. All right, so some of it has come to the side, so I'm just gonna grab my spatula and push it down. 
And for some of you, it might be at kind of like the riced collie consistency, and that would be great too on this recipe. If you want to keep it as more of that rice texture, go for it. I'm gonna go for more of the mashed consistency. So more pulsing, pulsing. Ooh, the hips, they can't stop. <laughs> All right, there we go. So now, the best part of all, it's time to eat. All right. So let me grab a plate. I'm going to dig in for the base. And the base just means the bottom ingredient for my newbies. Mmm, it looks like mashed potatoes. I was gonna say, just like mom made. But I don't think my mom was a big mashed potato maker back in the day. <laughs> she made a lot of other amazing things. And then we're gonna get some of that salmon. I have a spatula. Bam! Let me grab the salmon so I don't burn my hands. I'm not gonna bring the whole baked platter out, but I'm gonna plate the salmon over the mashed collie. Mm, yum! And then this kale salad. It's gonna be like more than half the plate. One, because it just looks so beautiful to have all these greens on the plate. But then two, because it tastes so darn amazing. And so again, there's no such thing as perfection with culinary nutrition, but the tastier it is and the prettier it is, the higher chance it is that we're gonna get it in our body. So that's why I like to have so much fun with this. You can see. Dun, 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 dun. That just look gorgeous and it smells really good. Let's taste it, shall we? Taste it together. Before I dig in, let's see if there's any other comments. All right, looks like we're good. So I'm gonna take a bite of the salmon and get a little scoop of that collie mash. Mmm, mm-hmm. That is all good. And I happen to be really hungry right now, so it worked out well. And this is one of those meals that you can make extra, especially for my friends who aren't sharing a household with other people. And I hear the reason, I will just say, the reason that they don't cook often is because they're just cooking for themselves. And I'm telling you, this makes an awesome leftover lunch. This is going to be my leftover lunch tomorrow, just so you know, <laughs> uh, in addition to my dinner tonight. Um, and so it's just one of those meals that you can cook if you're on your own, but you can also cook when you have a family because everybody eats this one. Mm. And so because of the seasonings we put into the kale salad, it's perfectly delicious the way it is. But I will tell you, feel free to put on your favorite salad dressing as well. Um, I typically put on a tahini dressing, and that's basically tahini some garlic, some live garlic, some more tamari, lemon, and olive oil. And it's delicious. So I think that's all I have. So don't forget to grab your free gift, michellefox.com forward slash sugar. And thank you so much for being here this evening. If you ended up cooking tonight, I would love to see your photos, whether you post them here in the comments or if you post them on Instagram, like I know Rhonda Rue is really great at doing tag me so I can come over and celebrate you. Um, but thank you. Oh, and then one other thing. Um, I am so committed to being here every second and fourth Wednesday of the month. The fourth Wednesday this month happens to fall on my real birthday.